Na 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 da na na Like animals, like vertebrates, like a bald eagle and giraffe. There's a lot of different kinds of vertebrates, let me tell you. They're hot. They're so awesome. Um, so we're going to learn about them. There's a lot of different kinds, like I said. Uh, they all belong to the animal kingdom, which is a eukaryotic uh, organism. Uh, they also, uh, ha as you've seen with invertebrate animals, they are eukaryotic. They're multicellular. They move. Uh, they are heterotrophic. Some of these vertebrates that we're going to learn about are uh, herbivores, some are carnivores, some are omnivores that eat both, like me. And uh, their cells don't have cell walls, and uh, uh, during embryonic development there is a blastula, and we'll take a look at some embryonic development here too within the vertebrates, which is what we're learning about. Remember, these have a backbone that is made of either bone or cartilage uh, and there is a uh, like I said there's a varied uh, number of different types of chordates or vertebrates. Chordates really if I use that term it's about the same as a vertebrate um, and they all have these uh, common characteristics pharyngeal slits which uh, to a lot of animals that you and I can think of that are land animals uh, leads to the development of lungs so we can actually well you learn about lungs during human uh, body system body systems uh, how we take in oxygen and get that oxygen to our cells but pharyngeal slits is something that they all have in common they also have a notochord uh, again made of this is like a nerve cord that runs usually the length of that organism uh, no matter what vertebrate you're talking about Postanal tail, and you might think, hey, humans are chordates or the vertebrates. I don't have a tail. Uh, turns out that, uh, yeah, we, we don't have a tail, uh, but we do have some bones that are fused together that form the coccyx that uh, are kind of the remnants of a tail, maybe. Um, and during embryonic development, actually, those bones actually do look as if the human does have a tail. Uh, but in most cases, obviously, we don't have tails. But yeah, there is either during embryonic development or uh, even after birth, uh, a lot of these, or all chordates, have that tail. And then uh, dorsal hollow nerve cord. So the nerve cord that also runs the length of that uh, other cord that is made up of cartilage or bone. Uh, so th those are some common characteristics that we're going to look at, but within that uh, there is going to be a lot of variation. Here's the first look at, this is actually an invertebrate, but it's kind of our starting point. So this invertebrate that uh, kind of has the first characteristics that lead to the development of a backbone. Um, but this animal, this lancelet that lives in the water, is spineless, doesn't even have a head to speak of, um, is kind of that starting point that we're going to go off of. Then we have something called a lamprey, uh, which is uh, kind of the first animal, the simplest vertebrate that we can think of that actually has a head. It is a vertebrate. It doesn't even have a jaw. This is not a picture of a lamprey. This is, though, uh, they're kind of gross looking to me but um yeah so not so good for chewing uh so they can't really chew their food they have to kind of be filter feeders and suck their food a little bit more but these lampreys uh based off of those characteristics there are also fish that uh are definitely differentiated from those uh lampreys and these are called cartilage fishes um, cartilaginous fishes include sharks, skates, and rays, and their characteristics are shown here. They have a brain, they have a two-chambered heart, a backbone made of cartilage, hence the cartilaginous fish uh, name. And these are the first animals that we'll learn about that actually have jaws uh, for chewing food. Obviously, we're quite familiar with uh, sharks, the great white shark depicted in the movie Jaws, 
but the movie title does fit. These are uh, the oldest organisms known that uh, actually do have jaws uh, that will uh, chew on the food. Uh, there's a short video that I'll include in the notes here that is about uh, ancient uh, sharks and how uh, a lot of the sharks that live today have been around for so long, uh, but they're very acclimated to the environment they live in, the ocean. Uh, from there, uh, there are some different kinds of fish that uh, have different characteristics. They actually uh, have bones. So bony fish, uh, again, are there's so many different kinds of bony fish you can think of in the movie Finding Nemo, like the clownfish. Um, or a northern or a pike or a northern pike or a walleye uh, or just about any fish that you can think of is probably fits into this class of animal bony fish uh, most are ray finned uh, some live near the bottom of the ocean some are closer to the surface but they're uh, pretty much everywhere you have water you're gonna have some bony fish uh, live there too so uh, this is uh, new development too. Okay, from there, um, there are some different characteristics for a different class of animal, and these don't quite fish or fit into the cartilaginous fish or the bony fish. Uh, these fish are called lobe finned fish, uh, which are not as various or as well known. However, uh, they're the closest link in between fish and amphibians. Uh, that exist in the world. They have lobes for fins, which are more like appendages of land animals. Uh, so coelacanths, which is this ancient looking fish, like the organism itself looks really old and zombie-ish, uh, but they have been around for a long time. Uh, and then lungfish are included in this group of lobe fin fish as well. All right, so the next uh, adaptation here uh, that exists here in the world. These are different, a different class of animals called amphibians. Uh, so let's take a look at these. These would include uh, frogs and salamanders, uh, coelacanths or Sicilians, uh, not coelacanths, but Sicilians, and there's a pretty funny video. Uh, if you like humor and music, and science in the same video. You can watch that one. The Sicilian Cotillion. That's how the song goes, at least the chorus does. Um, but you can learn about the, they really look like snakes, but they're actually amphibians. All right, so what makes them amphibians and a frog an amphibian or a salamander? Uh, for one, they are tetrapods, they have limbs or legs instead of fins. Or lobes so they have yeah legs limbs uh, that allow for movement on land and that's the big change here they live part of their life as a tadpole in the water uh, all of these amphibians do and then they develop legs and lungs for living on dry land uh, so they they're kind of laying their eggs in their wa in the water uh, their eggs cannot hold their own moisture uh, like other animals like reptiles that can uh, lay them uh, on land but so the there's going to grow and develop in the water and then part of their life uh, is is lived on land so uh, that is a different characteristics than ca characteristic than any of the fish that we previously learned about in other slides uh, we'll take a very close look at an amphibian uh, a frog uh, when we dissect and it's really interesting you will see a three chambered heart uh, you'll see the jaw hopefully take a look at the brain but there's a lot of structures inside that uh, inside and outside uh, for that amphibian that really leads to a lot of uh, survival and adaptation they're pretty awesome animals all right so looking at all these characteristics now and all these animals that have led to this point uh, amphibians have been different but now we're going to take a look at a different class of animals called reptiles and birds uh, which are actually very similar to reptiles in fact uh, birds are compared to dinosaurs a lot and that uh, dinosaurs are extinct of course but uh, maybe their descendants 
uh, today can be thought of as birds. Uh, they they share, do share a lot of characteristics. So let's take a look at the lizard, the reptiles. These live their whole life on land. In other words, they are totally terrestrial. Terrestrial means on land. Uh, and they live their whole lives there, uh, which is different than the amphibians. They have eggs with a shell to prevent dehydration, so they can actually uh, lay their eggs on land. And when they hatch, they're already on land. They don't live any part of their life uh, in the water. Uh, they are cold-blooded uh, or ectothermic, uh, so their temperature changes along with the outdoor temperature that they're experiencing in the climate they're in uh, or the daily weather. Uh, so a lot of reptiles you probably know. Uh, there's a lot of lizards, turtles, alligators uh, are included in this class of animal. Uh, I'll, sh I'll share a video about uh, reptiles here in the show notes as well. Um, but yeah, there's some awesome animals that some of you have learned a lot about already back when we did the animal brackets. But um, yeah, very cool. And if you've ever been to the reptile gardens uh, out in South Dakota near Rapid City, it's a, I would recommend it. It's really cool. Uh, they have a lot of snakes uh, and alligators and a lot of knowledgeable people that can help you learn about something you might be interested in. Uh, my my girls enjoyed uh, taking care of the over 100-year-old giant tortoises that they have there. But anyway, we'll keep moving. So birds. Birds are a lot like reptiles. Uh, big difference being that they are endothermic or warm-blooded instead. Obviously, that gift of flight is pretty cool. Uh, and it distinguishes birds uh, from a lot of different animals. Not that other animals can't fly. Uh, for example, bats uh, and insects and stuff if you go to invertebrates. But uh, that is a pretty cool adaptation that birds have. Uh, so birds have eggs with a shell to prevent dehydration, just like reptiles. They live their whole lives on land or in the air. Um, and these developed uh, lightweight feathers and bones for flight uh, and they wouldn't be able to get that kind of lift uh, that they need to fly unless they had really lightweight almost hollow bones uh, and feathers for that all right so the other adaptation that birds have is that they are warm blooded which means they maintain their body temperature despite the conditions that uh, that are around them. That's not to say that they can live absolutely anywhere, uh, uh, a lot of these species. Um, they are still acclimated to the type of weather they're going to experience, but their body is able to maintain the same temperature uh, regardless of outdoor temperature. All right, that's a lot of different animals we have going on here, and the last we're going to learn about with the main adaptation here being uh, the ability to produce milk for their young. In this class of organisms, this class of vertebrate uh, animals are mammals. Mammals are warm-blooded. Uh, all of them have hair, at least a little bit, or fur. Uh, and the big difference here is that they have uh, mammary glands and live births. So they're not laying eggs to... Um, that will hatch and the young come out of there but they actually give birth to live young uh, and they are able to produce milk to uh, sustain those young, uh, young young animals those young mammals uh, through their earliest days uh, so that's a big difference you can think of a ton of different mammals i'm sure whether it's primates or ungulates or ruminant animals uh, herbivores, carnivores, uh, mammals are uh, quite dominant and uh, humans belong as part of this class as well. So that's all for vertebrate animals. Uh, that concludes our classification unit as well, uh, but we're going to take a deeper look into these many classes of organisms uh, in the next few days of class. Uh, so let's get after it. Adios.